So we're live. Good morning and welcome to a new day. We're so excited. We want to welcome our, our viewing audience. Uh, just we're so excited. This is our first show that we're doing. We're so grateful that you decided to join us. Um, you know, we first of all, we want to thank Sally, who's off camera here, who's our engineer. Oh, wonderful Sally. Wonderful You're welcome. Sally. My pleasure. <laughs> we want to thank Tony and Eric, uh, who uh, just for this opportunity to be part of the Gov's Radio uh, family. Uh, we also want to thank uh, uh, Valentina and Greg from the Long Island Breakfast Club. Uh, we were on their show a few weeks back. And that sort of launched this whole thing that we're where we're at with this show. And we have a special thanks to Ken Pichel for his song Every Morning, which yes. is our theme song that we've been playing. Ken, thank you so much. I just want to give you want to give you a shout out uh, to that. And uh, obviously, you're Joaquin, and I'm Sharon. In case we didn't introduce ourselves. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you for taking this ride with us because um, this is our first journey into this and uh, it's like jumping out of a plane for us. So we appreciate that you're taking the ride with us as we learn and grow and work out the kinks here. And um, I know uh, a special shout out to Valentina because uh, those of you who know Valentina Janik from the Long Island Breakfast Club and her host, co-host uh, Greg, uh, Valentina is always moving, shaking and grooving somewhere and connecting with people. And that's how we were introduced to the governor's radio and how we met Sally, Eric, and Tom, and uh, Tony. And so we want to thank you for all the people who are helping us in our journey as we go along. And Definitely. we would be remiss. I also want to thank our family and friends, those of you who are, some of you are watching right now. But more importantly, you've stood with us through ups and downs yes. and sideways of life. Absolutely. And uh, we, you know who you are, our family, our friends, our church family. And uh, you stood with us with encouragement, with love, and with prayer. And so we want to thank you so much. And um, I want to... Well, we're doing some technical stuff here. So uh, as we work out kinks here, <laughs> we're trying to be professional, but we're working out kinks. Um, so I wanted to... Oh give a special thanks while he's working with Sally. To my husband, Joaquin, we've been married for 27 years. And we were just saying before, we've done everything together. We've gone on the ups and downs and the sideways of life. And I just want to thank you this morning, uh, taking this journey with me. Uh, he's really helped me find my wings to fly. And actually, you know, I was thinking about it during this week as we were preparing for the broadcast how it's so comical that I should be sitting here <laughs> because I'm the least funny person, trust me, that I know. <laughs> so for me to be on Gov's radio, which is uh, filled with so many talented comedians, um, that's comical in itself. I mean, you're funny, I mean, but I'm, I'm definitely not the life of the party by any means. If I walk into a room, I'll usually go to the corner, find a seat in the corner, and just sit and listen and watch everyone. So Not for me anymore. to be sitting here, <laughs> yeah, for me to be sitting here is uh, comical, but it's also, I hope, inspiring to other people to launch out. And um, I, I was also thinking this week how this is kind of what well, you know from your years in the military. Mm -hmm. My husband was a paratrooper. You were always jumping out of planes. Oh, yeah. 
And for us, launching a new day, uh, this radio program, uh, is like for us jumping out of a plane. And I thought about how <laughs> that's really been that's true. the I signature of it. our journey is that we've jumped out of so many planes together. And yeah, it's just, um, this is another jump for us and we're growing on this. And I was thinking, you know, God must really get a kick out of us because even though we don't know what we're doing half the time, we'll jump out of the plane and we'll take the journey. And that's how we learn and grow. And everything in life is a risk. If you're starting a business, there's a risk involved. If you're starting a relationship, there's a risk. If you're getting married, there's a risk. But with risk, there's always reward. And there's been many times we've taken risks in our personal lives and our ventures, and we've experienced failure, yes. and we have fallen. Uh, and not everything's been a success. But it's been rising up from those failures that has really formed the people we are today. And so I think um, what we want to leave you with, what's the purpose of a new day? Is to really, hopefully, you'll walk away from the hour with something that will inspire you, something that will encourage you. And as we, we, we'll be having guests, pe pe guests coming on in the future weeks, uh, not just Joaquin and I, but other people sharing their inspiring life stories. And so we're not here. Some of you may know that we are pastors of a church, but we're not here to talk yes. anyone into our church or to talk you out of your church, and we're not here to raise money out of people. We're actually here really to give back. Yes. We want to leave you with encouragement for the day and maybe get you thinking, you know what? God is not so distant. Exactly. Maybe he's closer than I thought. He's nearer than I thought. Maybe he knows more about me than I thought. And maybe he loves me a whole lot more than I thought. And so that's a little bit of the, the generation of this show. And we really, again, I want to thank Tony, Sally, and Eric for really thinking outside the box and giving us a place in your lineup and giving us a nice home here on Saturday morning. So we really appreciate that. So. I think I covered a little bit about yeah, what you definitely. wanted to say. Yeah, um, definitely. I, I think another thing to remember is uh, if you do want to call in, our number is 516-465-3990. Uh, but I, I think Sharon said it perfectly. We, we really want to be able to, to present to you perhaps a different God than you thought existed. You know, we all, have, uh, we all come from different backgrounds. We've all been exposed to some type of religion or whatever it is. Um, so I think that God is a lot closer than we realize, you know, even through all the difficulties and all the trials. And so we want to actually, one of the purposes of the show as we bring uh, our Spotlight series and also as we bring live guests is people just like you and I who've been through some difficult times in their lives and, they, and God saw them through it to give people hope and inspiration. Because, you know, without hope, we really, you know, life is kind of miserable. You want to be able to look forward to tomorrow. And so every day with a new day, with the rising of the sun, there's new hope. And, you know, uh, the Bible talks about, you know, that his mercies are new every morning and great is his faithfulness. And so that's, that's kind of what we, we want to kind of bring forth. We hope to, to be inspirational. We hope to, that it inspire you and that to make God seem a lot more closer than perhaps you ever knew that he could be as close. So um, I think we want to start, we want to segue now. We, into talking about what we're going to be spotlighting. So, honey, right. you want to, when you... And, uh, yeah, we have our notes here, so we want to kind of keep keep us on track since right. it's our first time out. Um, you did <clears> mention <throat> Ken Pesh Pesho, his song. You heard our opening song every morning. I just want to give a special thanks again to yes, him... Yes, definitely. ...for offering us this beautiful song. It was like it was custom-made for this show. And actually, you'll be hearing a little bit more of it at the end of the show. So we just really want to express our thanks. It was arranged by Caleb Crino and sung beautifully by Carolyn. And we, it's, you can actually hear it on SoundCloud. So again, we are so grateful for that. It's a blessing here. But we're excited yes. about today's program because this is a kickoff of what we call our Spotlight Series. And what that is is we're going to be profiling some well-known people, from, from various areas. It could be um, entertainment, it could be in the world of sports, it could be anything. People that are well known, but we're gonna profile them from who's the person behind the fame. 
behind the success, S some things you may not know about these different people. So to, we're really, I've been excited about this particular segment of Spotlight Series because we are uh, profiling Vincent Damon Fernier. And you'll say, okay, who's Vincent Fernier? Never heard of him. But if I said Alice Cooper, everyone has heard of Alice Cooper. No matter who you are, where you are, I'm sure you've heard of Alice Cooper. Um, and I was thinking how funny it is because his music was definitely not a part of my background. I mean, I grew up on uh, the Partridge family <laughs> and Donnie and Marie. That's, that's what I was off listening to. But even I know Alice Cooper. I know about his music. So, But we're going to show you a different side in his own words. We have some video clips that Sally's going to play for us. That's going to show you a different side of Alice, and he's with his beautiful wife, Cheryl. They're a strong partnership, and that's what I thought was so great yes. as well. And uh, just a few quick stats while um, Sally's setting up the video for us. Um, Alice Cooper, you probably know, was a mega rock star in the 70s and 80s, and he was dubbed the godfather of shock rock because his, he, uh, his shows were gothic horror stage shows and rock metal. And he kicked off that whole genre. Uh, he was elected into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And his hit single, School's Out, even I know that song. <laughs> <laughs> even I know that song, School's Out, was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. And he, uh, Alice has had a career spanning over 50 years. Think about that, 50 years. And he's cut more than 25 albums, and he sold over 50 million records. And actually, I didn't tell you this, honey. Next month, Alice Cooper is turning 72. Can you believe that? So wow. he's, had a, he's had quite a career and still, yeah. still very active, him and Cheryl. We, uh, we used to play his music very loud in the barracks when I was in the 82nd Airborne. So, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to play a little sh uh, five-minute video now taken from the Today Show. Sally's setting it up, and we're going to have it on the monitor here. So you'll be able to, if you're able to zoom in, on whatever device you're watching, try to zoom in. If you need to turn up the volume, that'd be great. And then we'll come back and we'll discuss it. Okay, Sally, it's all yours. A teen center that they opened seven years ago in the Phoenix area. And you'll be surprised to learn that Alice Cooper and his family, they are deeply religious. But as he says, he lost his way in fame, fortune, and alcohol before finding himself again. Hey. Alice Cooper is known as the godfather of shock rock. His concerts are a combination of music with some pretty frightening theatrics. You would probably never guess this man grew up in a religious home. Well, my dad was a pastor, my grandfather was an evangelist, and so I grew up in the church. So, I mean, growing up in such a religious background, did you take a detour then when you went into shock rock mode? I was the prodigal son. I, I, I grew up in the church and went as far away as you could possibly go and then got reeled back in. Uh, I had to overcome alcohol and drug addiction, you know. And that was something that was sort of par for the course for any rock star. In fact, it was a requirement. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting there drinking with Jim Morrison and Jimi Hendrix and those guys, and they're my big brothers. And they're all dying at 27 years old. You know, and you're sitting there going, okay, how am I going to survive this thing? Nobody ever thought past 30. Did you think that you might not live? I, I was on that highway. Cooper's alcoholism got so bad, his wife Cheryl left him in 1983 after seven years of marriage and only came back a year later when he got sober. She was just at a point saying, the only way I'm going to get his attention is to leave. So and how did so you stop? What changed for you? Everything was much clearer. You know, I mean, now I could see who Alice was, who I was, who the family was. Most of all, who the Lord was, who looked after this thing and said, that's enough. Cooper credits his sobriety to Cheryl as well as his faith. It's interesting. People say, uh, well, who's your sponsor? He says, well, I, I've never been to AA. I don't have a sponsor. I have a savior. And that's the difference. When did you decide that, okay, I'm going to go back and I'm going to be 100% committed into this? In the midst of that dark valley, I had to believe him when he said, I'm done. I'm done with all this. I didn't have a lot of faith that this was actually so, but I said, let's try this on these conditions.
because I believe marriage is forever. Cooper says there is now a big difference between what you see on stage and the man himself. And we'll on tour and then we'll, we'll have lunch and this and play golf and everything. But that night, when that curtain goes up, it's Alice Cooper then. Then it's the character. <laughs> Cooper writes about the connection between faith and music in the book Rock Gets Religion and believes you can find it in almost every song. So are you saying all rock and rollers are seeking something? They're, they're crying out for something? You know, I look at a lot of the death metal bands and they're screaming at God is what they yeah. are. They're so mad at God. That's a good thing. I think that's a good thing. That means that they're screaming out at something that they want Dad to help. Come on, you know. I, I think that there's something very healthy about that. These are all the rehearsal rooms. Since getting so sober, Cooper also has become more active in the community, opening the Alice Cooper Solid Rock Teen Center in 2012 in Phoenix, Arizona, where he lives. Is the idea to hopefully infuse some Christianity into the Well, I, you know, I, we don't beat them over the head with the Bible at all. Well, all of our counselors are Christians, but we don't ask them their background. We don't care who you are. You're welcome here. Kids 12 to 20 spend their afternoons learning to record music, dance, and even paint. We had one girl. She says, I do everything in lists. I list everything I'm going to do that day. And she said, I want to show you my list from last year. And it says, get up in the morning, go to school, have lunch with my friends, do my afternoon classes, go to the park, kill myself. And she was she 15. She says, on the way to the park, a friend of her said, let's go over to Solid Rock. She says, what is that? So there's a bunch of kids over there, you know, messing around with you. She's here every day at 3 o'clock. That is, I, I went to the board and I said, if that one kid, if that's the reason that we put this together, that's all I care about. You feel know, like God gave you a second chance? Oh, I think so. We're all going in all over to different directions, but our heart's in the right place and our souls are in the right place. <laughs> And Cooper and his wife Cheryl, they have such a beautiful partnership. They've been married for, <clears throat> excuse me, for 43 years, despite the year she left. She, they actually met because she's a dancer and a, a choreographer in his show, and she's always on the road with him. The 71-year-old father of three has really changed over the years, as you can see. Uh, the Alice Cooper you see on stage, not the man who is at church every Sunday morning, guys. He's deeply, deeply faithful. Awesome. Wow. I, that was, that's the side of Alice yeah. Cooper yeah. I didn't even know existed. That was really terrific, exactly. Natalie. Yeah. Thanks so, so much. Thank you. A couple of uh, brief stats about, about that. As you heard, I, hopefully you were able to hear it, that he, Alice has been married, or Vincent, has been married to his beautiful wife, Cheryl, for 43 years. Which I think even that yeah, is, that's is, quite an accomplishment. That's an accomplishment that's to be an that, especially in that entertainment yeah, world. Yeah, absolutely. Being in that. He's been clean and sober for over forty years. Wow, which is great. And none of his three adult children have a problem with drugs or alcohol. And which I thought was really most shocking to me is he's faithfully attended church on Sundays for the last twenty-five years. Think about it. Somehow, church and Alice Cooper doesn't seem to yeah. go together. That's but he's exactly been in right. church for 25 years, very active there. He states that he's dedicated his life to Jesus Christ because it was by God's help that he was able to overcome his drug and alcohol problem. And today he speaks to other people about Christ, including all of his friends in the mm -hmm. entertainment industry. So I just think, like, that's just so awesome, you know, how he's just very open with his faith and showing you a different side of him that I never really knew existed. That's, that's true. And he did make one comment. I know you wanted to talk about this. Yeah, sure. He talked about how, in uh, particularly in the rock metal and in the music, he's, he's heard, he hears a lot of anger. There's a lot of people that are angry at God, actually disappointed and n not understanding why certain things happen. And he hears the anger expressed right. in the music. And wh while it's never a good place to find ourselves in that position of being angry because we with God, we actually can't really experience and feel his love when we're angry. But nevertheless, we realize that the people are angry and confused. And so he hears that expressed in the music. And I know that's something you said you could really relate to in your years, especially in the military, about that anger and things. So I know you want to talk a little about that. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think, you know, when he was talking about, um, you know, people, uh, when, when the, the heavy metal bands and the rock bands are... Um, they're, you know, they're, they're angry. They're angry at God, and, and he felt it was a good thing. I think, 
you know, the expression of, of the anger is, uh, I, I can relate to that. Um, especially, you know, having been in the service, I mean, I joined the, the, the Army when I was 17. Uh, the recruiter was kind of like, I, I was angry. I was an angry kid. Uh, I, I grew up in a religious home as well. Um, you know, I was an older boy and the whole, the whole bit. But I just felt like, you know, God just felt so far away to me and felt like I had to, like, almost earn his love. And, and if somebody was always asking for more. And I felt like, why am I not enough? Why can't I just be accepted for who I am? So that went on. And then I think the rebellion just kind of blew up. You know, I was like, okay, I, I need to go somewhere. And um, so I went to the Army recruiter, a buddy of mine. I joined the Army, and uh, I took the ASVAB, scored the highest you can score, and I could could have done anything else. And the recruiter said to me, so what do you want to do? And I said, well, I want to go Airborne Ranger Special Forces. I think I made his uh, recruiting campaign for like six months or whatever it was. And, and so I had a lot of that anger, and I, I needed to prove something to myself. Uh, I needed to prove something to, to my family. Um, and so there was a lot of anger fueling that, and there was a lot of us. I mean, you know, they used to call the, you know, the average age in the 82nd Airborne uh, and in the Rangers was 19. So if you can imagine, we're all a bunch of highly trained <laughs> young men with a lot of angst going on. And this is his, Alice was the music that we played. So to me, this, this means, this is kind of brings me back to On Memory Lane because it was, it was like, wow, this guy that we used to listen to had the same problems I did, and God found him just like he found me. So he just kind of showed me that, you know, uh, he also talked about masks. And I think, you know, he said that when he went on stage, you know, it was Alice Cooper, right? Um, and then that was his onstage persona. But I thought about it, that we all have masks that we wear, that um, because we all want to be loved, we all want to be accepted, and sometimes that's how we got ourselves in trouble. I mean, that's how I got myself in trouble. You know, in the Army, you always wanted to, to do things, and we'd go drinking binges and all these crazy things that we would do, get into bar fights and the whole, the whole bit, because there was this thing inside that you wanted to belong, you wanted somebody to love you, and then there was just, like, this anger that you couldn't seem to extinguish. And for me, it was extinguished, just like with, with Alice, when you realized, you know what, God loves me just the way I am. I don't have to prove anything. Yeah. You know, Jesus died for me on the cross and paid for all my sins, and all my stupidities for the whole of my life. So I'm not trying to please God or gain his approval. If I've accepted Jesus as my savior, I'm, a, I'm already accepted. I'm already approved by God. So it's just a matter of allowing him to direct my steps of my life. Because he says, I know the plan thoughts and the plans that I have for you. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it plans for good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. And so that's great. But as a 19 year old, I didn't get that. And so I was, and as you know, I mean, the anger lasted into adulthood until finally I said, you know, I don't know why I'm angry. I don't understand why I'm angry. And, and I asked God to really help me out of it. And I started to let go of a lot of hurts and a lot of wounds from my childhood, a lot of the uh, people who failed me, broken promises, even wounds in churches and stuff like that. We all go through that. And so those things tend to drive us far away from God in our mind. But God is never far. That's the beauty of the gospel. It's that God has come near. It's, it's rec God has reconciled mankind to himself through the cross of Jesus Christ. And so, you know, wh which it is, it's a very practical faith because at the end of the day, we all need a practical faith to live our lives. We, we need practical solutions to real world things. Um, so if, if you can't tell someone uh, a Bible story or a quote of scripture verse and give them a practical way for them to apply it to their lives, then it's meaningless. And Jesus was very practical when he spoke. Paul was very practical. And so, you know, I, I really related to Alice because I wore masks and I didn't realize I was wearing masks. And, and inside, the, the, because you felt like I wasn't going to be accepted uh, when they know who I really am, that people want me to be this person, whoever that person is. So we put these masks on. We go to work, we have a mask. We're around family, we have another mask. Uh, we're around friends, another mask. And then at some point, we don't even know who the real us is. We're not, right. we're not comfortable in our own skins. And the thing of it is, is you can be comfortable because the person who knows you the most intimately and in all whatever you may think is ugly and yet you don't like about yourself, who knows you better than anybody, loves you already. So it's like, okay, so I don't have to prove anything. I think that helped me to deal with getting rid of my mask where I was comfortable being myself mm -hmm. at work 
with my wife, with my family, with my friends, wherever I was, it was the same Joaquin. It wasn't like one person at work and one person with friends and one person, you know, it was just me. Mm -hmm. And and that really helped me deal with my anger issues. And I, and I, I really understand, um, you know, think about um, drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. You know, I deal with veterans all the time at the, at the VA hospital. And substance abuse is just a way to deal with mental health issues, emotional issues. There's a lot of wounds and a lot of hurts that people have. And to know that people are accepted and loved just the way they are helps them through the process of loving themselves. Because mm -hmm. if you don't love yourself, aside from God, if you don't love yourself, no one's going to love you. Right. And, and I think that really, I don't know, that helped me. And I think that in listening to uh, Alice's testimony was essential in realizing, wow, God really does love me. And right. so that, that's what starts you on the road back home. Yeah, I think for me, actually, we have interesting stories because in one respect, you've You've grown up on one side of, of the track, and I'm kind of on another <laughs> side of the track. But there's a commonality. Yes, I, I married up. In case you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> there's, there's a commonality in that um, I may not have grown up on Alice Cooper and rock metal and stuff. Um, I actually grew up in the church. I was literally a church kid. And, you know, I knew all the Bible stories. You know, I knew about Jonah and the whale, and I knew about, <laughs> you know, David and Goliath. I knew all the Bible stories. Um, so I knew the facts, I knew the figures, but there was always something inside of me that I didn't, I couldn't really experience God. You know, I knew about God, um, I knew the scripture verses, but there was something inside of me that, even though I wasn't angry right. per se, but there was something inside of me that was searching, where is God? Where is God in my life? H uh, how is he involved in my life? Does he really know me? And so you can be in church and still have, still feel a distancing from God. Just because you go to church doesn't make you close to God. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. Well, yes. I go to church and, you know, I do the religious things, but I don't feel a closeness. He, God is always somewhere out there, somewhere out in a distance in the stratosphere somewhere. It's like he's got time for everyone else but me. Right. And he's dealing with the big things yeah, in the so, world. He yeah. doesn't have he's time for me. He's not interested in my small little things. Yeah, exactly. So even though I grew in the church, I grew up in the church, there was a distancing. And I think um, what I wish I would have found in church more of was what you exactly were saying is how much God loved me, how much he loves me and he's involved in my life. Most of church, the focus was on getting me to love God more, getting me to do good works, yes. getting me to be a better person, as opposed to filling me with how much deeply I'm loved, mm -hmm. that God never came to use me or abuse me or work me to death. He just wanted to love me. And I think I sat in church and I didn't really get that message. And so that's, I think, what a new day is about too, getting that message out about how deeply loved we are, even when things go sideways in our lives. And so what was, what was a turning point for you, honey, in terms of, because you grew up in the church, so you, you're not like, you know, uh, you came to the Lord at a young age, you know, six years old. I mean, I came, I actually came to the Lord at seven in the Catholic church because we actually had a nun that actually preached the gospel right. to us. But, and so our paths are different, but w what was a turning point for you in terms of being able, to being, being realized that, you know, God loves me just the way I am. Like, what was that, if, you know? I think because I needed to start hearing the truth of that. I needed to start hearing those kind of messages, uh, being exposed to the truth of that, and beginning to see the Bible in a whole new way. Because, um, you know, you can read the Bible, and it's just a, a book of rules and regulations. Yeah, that's true. You know? That's a good point. But I think so over time... And sitting under the right teaching, I began to see the Bible less as a book of rules and more as a love letter, really, from a loving God, from a loving Father who was always seeking me, seeking me out. And so I think it's our perception. If you perceive God to be far away, then he will, that'll be your reality. <laughs> yes, that's exactly that'll right. That'll be yeah. your reality. And so for me, the turning point was really hearing the truth, which for many years I hadn't heard the truth, that... I'm loved just the way I am, unconditionally, and with no strings attached. And I never really heard that kind of preaching. And so once I started to hear that, it actually changed the way I thought and right. how I perceived God. And I began to recognize him in little ways working in my life, connecting me with the right people, 
bring opening doors for me. You know, it, it changed the way I perceived God and saw him. Right. I think one of the things that um, uh, Cheryl said, which was which was powerful, is that they asked her, okay, so who's your sponsor? And she said, I don't yeah. have a sponsor. I have a savior. And, um, and, and I thought that was very powerful in that, you know, the, the understanding of how much God loves us and how much he gave up for us is a game changer because then right. you're no longer, I'm not alone in this thing. I may be going through some difficulties. I may have made my mistakes. But God is a restorer of things lost. You know, uh, I, he talks about in the scriptures about restoring the years that the locusts have eaten. Um, you know, it, it's just being able to understand, hey, I'm not in this alone. And a sponsor is somebody who you could pick up the phone and call them, right? Or you visit with them. Um, but a savior is always with you. Right. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. It's someone who's always there. You know, like the Proverbs talks about, there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And he is a friend. And, and I think that's, that to me that was very powerful because when you look at Alice Cooper and his life, what transformed him was his savior bringing him back right. into his bosom. And he's been clean and sober for 40 years. Um, I think that's incredibly powerful right. because for, for people to turn the corner for me with my anger, to be able to turn the corner and not being angry anymore is understanding that I didn't have a sponsor, but I had, I had a savior. Like, what, what do you, what do you yeah, thoughts on no, that? Yeah, no, exactly. And I think actually on, on that, I, I have a couple of quotes yeah. actually from Alice Cooper himself because I know Sally, I think, is going to set up the second clip. We have a second clip coming up uh, where – it's Alice and his wife Cheryl are talking. So I think you'll really enjoy that one. But while she's setting it up, as you probably heard in the other clip, he has actually, believe it or not, a church background where he said his father was a pastor and evangelist for 25 years. So he grew up in the church. He says here, I'm quoting him, I grew up in the church and I went as far away as I could from it. I almost died and then came back. I finally realized that I had to go one side or the other. I had to make a decision for one side or the other because I was so convicted. The Lord really convicted me saying, look, it's time to make a decision here. I said, okay, and I joined a church and that's where I've been going now for over 25 years. And he says, he ends this quote with saying, the very fact that God cared enough about me to save my life about 20 times. Yeah and help me survive a million different things to put me where I am now. So I mean, for Alice, it's real. This isn't yes, religion. Correct. This is a life-changing relationship. That's true. And it's real. If it's not real, it's not gonna change your life. Absolutely. I can I can tell you that firsthand. Um, when God became incredibly real to me, I was, this was uh, right before the, the uh, Iraq war in, in 1991. Um, I, I've had a crisis of faith. I went as far away from God as you can go. And and then it became incredibly real. You know, it was a helicopter accident. And I almost got killed. And it woke me up. Um, and then, then God began the slow process of bringing me home. But once that happened, like, I couldn't turn back because God became very real. His love for me became very real. Y you know, it's hard to walk away from love. When you're loved yes. and you feel it, it just draws you like a magnet and it, and it keeps you anchored. That's right. Sally, are we We're ready set. for our second clip? It's been my blessing to know Alice and Cheryl Cooper now for 25 years as friends. I love them. They're the most humble people you're likely to meet. And let's welcome them now. Come on up. We want to hear from you. I'm not used to this. <laughs> is, is this how you hold it? Like yes, this? how you do it. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I forgot to give you lessons. Vince was telling me the other day, you've just invented a holster, right? Yeah. So you can slip that microphone. You need the mic stand up there. Yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Took you a few years to think of that. Yeah, I know. We should have thought of that years ago. <laughs> you've just finished a long, grueling tour, world tour. Tell us about it. What's been going on? 300 days on the road this year. Yeah, 300 days. 300 days. I tell everybody, I sleep on a bus, I sleep in a bed that moves, and I share a toilet with eight men. 
But you know, when we travel, we travel and, and we Hello, welcome to the see show. a lot of churches, a lot of different Hello. churches. From hey, mega Dennis, hold on for a second. We're watching a five minute video, okay? Do you want to call back later? Yeah, yeah and, uh, no problem. So okay. we, we really do get to experience all over the world, even. You know, one time we went to a church and they told us it was an English church and it was all in German. <laughs> and, but it didn't matter because we got it. We understood what they were talking about. Amen. Amen. Uh, and, and, you know, one thing that we, that Cheryl and I, uh, the two most unlikely people to be able to form this uh, solid rock foundation, which is teenagers. Um, I've always worked with teenagers musically, and the Lord put it on us. Well, you need to do something with teenagers now, spiritually. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Chuck Saval and his wife, Lisa, we started 20 years ago with Solid Rock. And now it's, uh, we've been open three years. We get about 100 kids a day in there. And these kids have taught us so much mm -hmm. because we're not used to some of the things that they've gone through. Mm -hmm. um, it's just some of the amazing... The parents are arguing not about if they're going to be in a gang, but which gang they're going to be in. Mm -hmm. And... There's some of the stories that just we just sit back and go, wow, you know, how, how do we deal with this? But it's all dependence on the Lord, and that's, that's all we can do is, is pray and be dependent on him and to nurture these kids. You teach them music. You teach them art. Yeah. Teach them dance, Cheryl, yes, and, and where, to keep them off the streets. And most of all, you teach them about Christ. And where is this foundation? Tell us. Some of us know, but some of us don't. Well, uh, the Rock Teen Center is located on the southeast corner of 32nd Street and Camelback. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. You would get it as soon as you walk through those double doors. He calls it the glorious racket. <laughs> there's, there's kids in there that are just learning guitar. Um, there are kids that have been playing now for three years and can really play. But these are the same kids that would have been selling meth uh, on the streets. And some of the stories that we hear about, they feel safer there than they do at home. Mm. Uh, we told one of the kids he could take his guitar home and practice, you know, because he's been there mm. for two years. We trust you to take the, mm. the guitar home. And he said, I can't do that. Mm. My dad will sell it for drugs. Oh. And mm. the fact that he knows that, the fact that he is, uh, understands that, yeah. you know, yeah. is, is amazing. That's that, awesome. But that's the, the, some of the stuff they're living with. Mm. And we have to get out of Scottsdale and go to where they are, mm. you know, and, mm. and it's totally an education for us. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Switch gears a little bit. Forty years of marriage. I think you contributed the, the flowers last week to us in church. She was six <laughs> when I married her. <laughs> that was going to be my line. Uh, you beat me to I it. I stepped on your line. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you got to tell us, I mean, what is the secret? Forty years. How has it happened? You know, when I talk to most people, I will say he still pursues me like I'm not already his, <laughs> which elicits a wonderful response. But Jesus Christ is the glue of our marriage, mm. the foundation upon which everything else hangs. Mm. And if it weren't for that connectivity, I don't know how anybody can be married in this world mm. yeah, and it's, survive. It's designed the, Satan has designed the world now that marriage doesn't mean that much at all. My grandparents were married 76 years. Yeah, I'm not sure why I cut out at that point. Did you hear that? Yeah, I just... Okay, well... Can we resume it, or we can't resume it? Yeah, let me see. Having some technical difficulties. Sorry about be, that, be folks. Be patient with us, a please. Of, some technical <laughs> difficulties. But we hope you're hearing it anyway. Well, I, I guess we can just... Let's, uh, and actually, yeah, I, I guess... Yeah. Uh, did you want to... Yeah, just kind of kind of talk about it. I, and yeah. actually, we do welcome uh, call-ins, uh, only not when we have a video clip, because we don't want you to have to hold on for so right, long. Right, exactly. But if you don't see the call-in number at the bottom of your screen, we're not sure what you're seeing. Again, the call-in number is 516-465-3990. 516-465-3990. Okay. So let's, since we, we, we you know... Sally, do if you can get it back up, just let us know. Yeah, yeah I don't... Uh, or we can just continue and we can talk right. about it and, and mm -hmm. do that. So I, I think you had, um, there were some uh, other quotes that you had uh, about him. 
Well, yeah, the last quote I had um, where he talks about uh, he really had everything. I mean, he had the fame, he had the for well, he still has <laughs> right, yeah. fame, fortune, and success. Mm -hmm. But he makes a really profound statement. Another quote that I had from him, he sa Alice says, when you get out there and realize you've had every car, every house, and all that, you realize that's not the answer. Right. There's a big nothing out there at the end of that. So materialism doesn't mean anything. A lot of people say that there's a big God-sized hole in your heart. And when that's filled, you're really satisfied. And that's where I am right now. So think about that. At the, at the end of all these, you know, over 50 years being in the business, right. that's how he sums it up that he, he still came up empty, despite all the fame, the success, the achievement. That's right. Still came up empty, and it wasn't until he God filled that part of his life that he really feels satisfaction right, right. now. exactly. And he says that he has a message for his critics. He says, I'm a new creature now. Don't judge Alice by what he used to be. Praise God for what I am now. So it's mm. a whole new beginning. And this isn't, you know, a pastor telling you this. This <coughs> isn't a preacher. This is Alice Cooper exactly. in his own words. So. I mean, uh, and this is, this, is, this is a guy who, you know, was the idolized by teens and adults. And, you know, I was one of them. Um, <clears throat> and I think his story, <clears throat> excuse me, had such a profound effect on me because this is a guy who we idolized in the barracks and played his music and, and to see this transformation that he went through, and, and it was real. And I, and I think one of the things that I thought was interesting was they'd been married for 40 years, and they felt that marriage was forever, and, and we all know that that, doesn't, that isn't always the case for everyone, and right. thank God you know, for the cross and fresh, fresh starts and new days, right? Um, but I, I think the, the, they both got filled with something. God became very real to them. And so they were able to pour out on these kids. Right. And the interesting thing was that they weren't judgmental with these kids. They just showed them love. Um, they gave them a safe place for them to come right. and to inspire them and fill them with hope. And, just, and, and that expression of love uh, expressed itself in artistic in, in their artistic abilities and in, in music and in different things. Right, which I think is so great. He's running the Solid Rock Foundation now, right. getting kids off the streets as he said, that would normally be in gangs or right. who knows what they'd be doing, and channeling all that energy into artistic talent, exactly. which I think is great. And the, the thing that I find interesting, as um, I, I was in gangs when I was, <laughs> when I was younger, you know, Mom, don't, don't freak out. Um, for, for these kids to have been in gangs or to have be un, in, a, in an environment where a gang life is, is tempting, the counterbalance has to be so powerful to draw them away from that. So mm -hmm. think about that for a minute. You know, uh, he, when, when he was talking about the kid with the guitar, that he, he didn't want to take it home or else his father would sell it for drugs. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the environment that these kids live in, but yet they keep coming back to the center. Right. They keep growing. They keep uh, experiencing. Right. So the yeah, truth has to be so powerful. Was that, it like, uh, sorry to interrupt you, know. you, was it one minute that was left at the last one? I, I, I'm set up for the next clip, but I have no problem well, going we'll back to like no, the last no, minute. We'll, we'll stick with the last. I don't know if you oh. covered it while, you, while I was yeah, it's okay. flipping well, through yeah. stuff. We'll, we'll just do so, that for... I didn't we'll, know if you could resume it. I didn't know. I, what I can. So it's up oh, to you yeah. if you like covered it while I was kind of yeah, flopping we, around we in there. Yeah, we kind of did. Oh, you don't want to resume it? Okay, it's up to you. Yeah, well, I mean... I don't think there's much left on it, actually. Can you pick it up where we dropped off or... No. I'm not exactly sure where it was, but I could play like the last oh, okay. minute yeah. or, or two. How about that? I think the last minute is the one that we're playing with Cheryl, right? Yeah, that was at the ending. Are you ready for that? Or I didn't want to yeah. interrupt no, you. No, no. I mean, I think... Um, we can hold, wait on that for Yeah, me. just... Uh, I, I think what I, what I wanted to say is there's something that had to be... That is, I should say, because it's not past tense, so impactful for these young people to be drawn to the Solid right. Rock Center. And to... It's an... Uh, you know... Not an alternative, because people say, oh, we just want to give kids an alternative to doing something. But it had to be something so powerful to draw them away from an yeah. environment in which they live in. Their parents are drug addicts. Uh, they live in, in a gang environment, or they're coming from gangs. And yet, what uh, the Coopers are doing is so powerful mm -hmm. that has drawn them away. So I think that's what we were talking before. When God becomes real to you, 
then all these other types of lifestyles and all these other things, drug, alcohol, gangs, it just, they, they don't have that pull on you anymore. Right. Yeah, I, actually, had we been able to see the rest of the clip, he gives a great example, a great story. Did you want to tell me something? Yeah, I have it, if you want me to do, like, the last minute. Oh, okay, w oh, one the last, second. The no, yeah, uh, oh, that's of, the, of the second clip, I'm, I'm not talking yeah, about the last one. Do you want me to just play, like, the last minute of where it got cut off before? Oh, of where it got cut off? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, let's do that. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> mean to you? How has he changed your life? Well, I think all of us struggle with big questions. Yeah. And I think we're kidding ourselves if we don't contemplate where do we come from? Yeah. Origin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about morality? What about meaning? And what about destiny? Yeah. And all those questions are answered in God's truth. You know, God yeah. says, if you abide in me and in my word, the truth shall set you free. Yeah. That's a great thing. Freedom in Christ is a great thing. Yes. I Amen. just, I think that uh, our greatest weapon is unarmed truth, mm. and unconditional love is the greatest truth. Yes. Amen. And Jesus came to give us that. Amen. Who needs a preacher? <laughs> this is good. This is good. I just follow her around like a puppy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, uh, Vince, when we baptized you, when I baptized yes. you. Do you remember what you said when you came out of the pool? Yes, because my father said the same thing. <laughs> my father said, uh, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yeah. And I wanted to say the same exact thing because it was very true. Yeah. And, uh, and it has happened. Yeah. Uh, our kids and uh, everybody in our family will yeah. be here today. They'll be at, the, yeah. I think, the second service today. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's a uh, Jesus Christ-driven household. I know it is. I know it is. I love it. Cheryl, tell us quickly. You have a ministry here at Camelback. Yeah, something there. you can do. And then there's, a, there's a last clip, uh, Sally, at the end. Do you want me to play it right now, or you want to okay. talk a little bit first? Or uh, I could you, do either. Yeah, you want to you gear it up now, I guess, to... So I think it starts at 12.03 mm -hmm. in. So while she's uh, setting that up... Yeah. Good, good. Oh, no, he actually gave, I, I think we kind of missed it somewhere, but he gave a story. Ter you were talking about the Solid Rock Foundation with mm -hmm. working with these teens. He gave a terrific story how they encountered a, a young girl, a teenage girl, uh, who they got to know. And she told them, you know, I do everything in my life in lists. You know, I, I go to school, I come home, I do my homework, I do some chores, and then the last thing on my list is I'm going to go to the park and then I'm going to kill myself. So she actually had it planned out in lists, and she was planning to kill herself that day. And a friend of hers said, hey, come with me to Solid Rock. And she's like, well, what is that? She says, just, just come. Just hang out with us. Long story short, he said, that same girl who was ready to kill herself that day has been at Solid Rock every day for the last three years. Wow. So when you were talking about something more powerful drawing you out of Exactly. That, you know, and so terrific story there. No, I, I mean, it's um, it definitely does. And, and I think that when when you think about both their backgrounds and where they're coming from, you know, God is real to them. Absolutely. And I think that's what blew my mind as somebody who <clears throat> was a huge Alice Cooper fan in the Army to see this transformation. I mean, you know, it's one thing if it's just an average person. You're like, ah, OK, I don't know who you are, but. Right. Dude, it's Alice Cooper. Like, are you kidding me? Like, he really went through all that, and he's really been sober for 40 years. And, right. um, you know, uh, but I do, I do just want to plug one thing when he said, which I thought was kind of cool. Actually, Cheryl said that, that he pursues her like it's the first time. And oh, I, right. I think that was so, so beautiful. I mean, you know, Sharon and I have been married 27 years, and, and yeah, I, I do a lot of that. Yes, you do. And so does she. She <laughs> does stuff for me. Um, but, but I think... To be able to express love, you have to know you have to you can't give something you don't have. Right. And I think that was probably a lot of the issues that I ran into as a, a young person in the church, is that there were people telling me about God who really didn't know God mm -hmm. intimately. So they were just kind of reading me the textbook version of God, mm -hmm. which makes God feel very far away. Right. And I wanted an intimate God, a close God who would love me just the way I am. And like Alice, so to see his story and to see what he went through and to see this massive transformation and how genuinely in love these two are. I mean, he right. said, I follow her around like a puppy. I think because his eyes was open, 
you know, the dynamics of your life changes. I can tell you from my own experience um, as a person who went through a lot of different, you know, crazy journeys in my life, that when <clears throat> God's love was real to me, I was able then to express that love outwardly. And for me, it happened just before I met this beautiful woman here. And so I was able to be the husband that I had dreamt of being because I knew how much I was loved by God and I was able to express that love outwardly. Um, and I think that's, that's pretty powerful. Right. It's, they're a team. It's not just Alice Cooper, but you can tell she's exactly. she's um, <clears throat> strong in her own in her yes, own right, which like is great. <laughs> which is great. So Sally, if you have that last minute, we can yeah that la- that one minute every clip, I think. day. What would you like to say to somebody yeah, who perfect. doesn't know Christ, Lord and Savior? Christianity is not a religion; it is a relationship with an all-powerful, all-loving God who knows your name and has a marvelous plan for your life who numbers the very hairs on your head. So it's not a religion, it's a relationship. It's not a philosophy, it's a person. I didn't come to a place in my life, I came to the person of Jesus Christ. And Christianity is not an organization, it is an organism. Big difference. The body of Christ is a living organism. We are saved to serve, and that's what we do. I can't do any better than that. (laughs) (laughs) She said a mouthful in uh, less than 60 seconds. Yeah, she did. She really did. I mean, she really did. Um, So what what do you think about that? The comment I thought was so powerful was that Christianity is not an organization but an organism. As someone who was born and raised in the church. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, that's the... I guess if there was one goal that we have with A New Day, the program, is to present a loving God, a loving Father, that's not a religion. This is not a religion. It's a a relationship that he's intimately involved in my life. He knows about me. No matter where I am, up, down, or sideways, he's he's there with me, and he knows me. And so I think there's such a big difference between if we can grasp the difference between religion and relationship, which is why we started out this program saying we're not looking to talk you Mm -hmm. into church. We're not looking to talk you into our church or any church. We're looking to present to you a heavenly father who loves you just the way you are and just where you are. That's the whole purpose of a new day. I I think that, you know... In order for us to be, because like as Cheryl said, we're, it's not an organization, it's an organism, it's a body. Yeah. We don't, it's sad to say, I mean, I think that was the thing that drove me away from, from God, because I equated the church to God, <clears throat> and they're not. So what drew me away is because I felt like I was, and it, it was like an organization, it wasn't an organism, I didn't feel like a body. A body takes care of itself. Can you imagine... If the body said, I don't need the left hand and cut it off, like it would never do that. Right. Um, when, you know, when you bang, if you stub your toe, your whole body feels the pain. And I don't think, I think a lot of people who have felt distant from God is because they don't feel that connection. Right. There's not that connectivity. You know, God is just somebody who's so far away, who's not really interested in my problems. Um, and, and I think that's what we, we hope to bring forth in a new day from our own experiences and other people's experiences who have experienced this wonderful God. And as we stated at the beginning of the show, we, are, we both uh, pastor a, a community church, Pure Grace Ministries, and that's always been our goal, to unveil God's heart and Christ's finished work on the cross because it does change your life. It, it, it does, and when it, it, it's real. And when that becomes real, then you can be a real active participant in, in relating to people. You know, because then you're not worried about pleasing people because God's already pleased with you. Right. Well, I think people can spot a phony really quickly. I mean, yeah. you, can, you can see through a phony, you know, nice. if it's real, you know. And right. I, think, I think that's what we want to be real. We don't want to tell you about what we're doing or what we did or what we accomplished because that doesn't tell you who we really are. Yeah, and exactly. So I think that's one of the goals of the show. Definitely. And so... Actually, we're going to be back in two weeks, right? That's right. Two a weeks, which is February 1st, if February I'm not mistaken. 1st. Yes. And as I said, we're not here to raise money. We're actually here to give, to give back inspiration, to uplift you and to give encouragement. 
Uh, we do have, Sally, I think, has it on the screen now. Uh, we do have our website. So if you want to know more about us, more about the ministry, or more even if you want to send us an email, we have yep. an email up there. Yep. Please send us your email if you, with your comments, questions that you have, yeah. or there may be some folks out there that would even like prayer. You send in a prayer request. We have a dedicated prayer team. And, you know, a lot of folks say, oh, I'll say a prayer for you. And they mean well, but, you know, half the time they really don't pray for yeah, you. Yeah, that's true. They really, <laughs> so I can, they're not really I can in. say 100% <clears throat> with confidence we have a dedicated prayer team. They're faithful. They're passionate about prayer. And they do pray. Yes, they so do. So if Absolutely. you send in a prayer request, they will be praying for you. It's yes. not just something we say. Yeah. And, and please also, you know, as you take this journey, for, for those, we hope you continue to take this journey with us every other week, is um, let us know. You know, give us, you know, uh, for those of you who are m maybe never heard this terminology, we call it a testimony. And as we say in our church, you know, you have to go through a test in order to have a testimony. But, you know, the goodness of God and things that, you know, you difficulties, if you come in and you send us an email and asking for prayer for something, please let us know how things turn out, because I think it's encouraging to to us, um, you know, because we know God, God is good and God can and will turn things around. Sometimes you may have to wait a little bit. That's still something that's a bit of a mystery that we won't really know fully or understand fully until we get on the other side of, of eternity. But uh, but definitely, yeah, send us, a, uh, you know, your, any your prayer requests. Um, any questions you any may questions have. Any questions you may have, have absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, definitely and, and, uh, visit our website, uh, www.anewday.nyc. Um, and uh, we're, we'll, this will be up there. We also have a blog there where we put some inspirational things as well. Um, you know, but be encouraged. You know, um, I know if you're here in New York, you're probably bracing yourself for snow. But, you know, God's blessings will shower down on you as well. Right. Yeah, and so we'll see you in two weeks. That's we'll February weeks. 1st. I hope you'll join us. And Sally's going to play a little bit more of Ken Peschel's beautiful song every morning. And we'll sign off with that. Okay. Be blessed. Be blessed. You are my God every morning. You are faithful, faithful. I am your child.